Okay, so just to bring everything together and also to have an experience of a design of an amplifier, let's actually solve this example. So the example is giving us a circuit that looks like this, as shown here. Um, let me activate my laser point. Yep. So it says that design is shown the CB stage, and when it says design this stage, it means that, well, you don't have to actually change the circuit schematic, you just have to find out the exact value of R1, R2, RE, RC, and then the current flowing through the transistor, and uh, whatever voltage at, at any point, like you should be able to tell what is the voltage at any point. So all the unknowns should be known. We need to design this amplifier or design the circuit or specify these parameters to get a gain of 10, to have an input impedance of 50 ohms, and assuming that IS is this much and there's no early effect, the beta is 100 and VCC is 2.5 volts. Okay, so where do I start? I'm going to start with the input impedance. So it says that R in is equal to 50 ohm. What does that tell me? I know that the R in of this circuit, this is R in, right? It's going to be 1 over GM in parallel with RE. I learned that from the previous slide, right? You might think that, well, looking up to the emitter, you said that it's 1 over GM plus whatever I have in the base divided by uh, beta plus 1. And you, like in the previous slide and the previous examples, I didn't have anything in the base, but now I do, right? My, my answer to that question is, well, do you? Because uh, you don't have anything in the base from this, uh, from the small signal point of view, simply because of this guy. So the CB, which stands for C bypass, is really shorting your base to ground during the AC analysis. So the R1 and R2 are still there. And when you're doing DC analysis, the CB doesn't do anything. It's an open circuit, so you just basically ignore it, right? But, and then, well, R1 and R2's job is to actually make sure that you get the per proper biasing that you want. So like we have to design them to get the voltage that we want at this node, right? But when you're doing AC analysis, you can appreciate that the base is connected, is gonna be short circuited to ground. So your R1 and R2, so like your base of the transistor, if I just want to draw that part of the circuit, so you have an R pi and GM V pi and blah, blah, blah. On the base side, you have an R1 to ground. You have an R2 to ground. And you have a short circuit to ground, right? So you can see that the base is actually connected to ground. So R pi is going to be still there because emitter is not grounded. You have some R E here, and basically there is some sort of a voltage across this R pi, although it's going to be probably a negative voltage. But there is R pi is going to be still in the picture. But R1 and R2 are in parallel with this short circuit, so they're going to be going away, right? So this is really the effect of this bypass capacitor. That's why we call it bypass capacitor. It bypasses the R1 and R2. So my Rn is going to be 1 over GM in parallel with Re, simply because there's no resistance in the base. So this means that during AC analysis, R1 and R2 are bypassed. Therefore, no resistance in the base. Okay? Now, if Rn is 50 ohm and it's 1 over GM in parallel with Re, we said that we want Re, and so like basically, Another thing that we know is that we want RE always to be much greater than 1 over GM. So I can, since this is a design question and I want just basically some numbers that work, there's no unique answer. I'm just going to say that I'm going to approximate this with 1 over GM. And the point of like basically knowing that RE is going to be, I'm going to choose RE to be really big. Then, well, I can, I can approximate this. With a good with with a good precision that one over GM divide in parallel with RE is just going to be one over GM. What's nice uh, about do, doing this approximation? Well, it actually gives me GM, right? So like now I know that GM is going to be one over fifty, 
amp per volt. Okay, that's nice. Now, knowing this, I can actually know my current, my bias current. Therefore, IC is equal to uh, basically the GM is IC over VT, right? So IC is going to be just basically GM times VT. Or let me actually write the equation that you are more familiar with. So GM is equal to IC over VT. So from these two, I can say that IC is just going to be GM times VT, VT being uh, 26 millivolts. I'm going to have an IC that is 0 0.52 milliamps. Great. Okay. Now that I have my IC, uh, let's see what, I, what else I can say. The next thing I'm going to say is that uh, what's my gain? So AV is going to be equal to, so for a common base amplifier, since I'm connecting uh, this, like the V in through this decoupling capacitor, I found the gain from the previous slide that the gain was 1 over GM in parallel with RE over 1 over GM in parallel with RE plus RS times GM RC. Okay, looking at this, I can see that RS is zero. There is no source resistance. So there's no resistance here, basically. So this goes away. So this fraction is just becomes one. So this is going to be just GMRC. Okay. And I could tell that because I knew that, like looking at this capacitor, this decoupling capacitor, I can see that VIN is actually connected to here. So remember that it was always GMRC times the VX over VIN. Well, VX over VIN is one, so I can just say that this is GMRC, right? And then, well, the fact that there's no resistor at the base is also helping because if there was a resistor at the base, then the voltage across that R pi, the fraction of V in that was across R pi would have been, well, less than just the entire V in. So I had to actually take that into account. I hope that like as a practice example, you guys could actually think about what would have happened if you had some RB at the base, okay? The gain would have been slightly different. You would have had just just give you the answer. You would have had GMRC times um, R pi over R pi times um, R pi over R pi plus that R B plus beta plus one times R E. Okay, so this would have been the gain, right? But then for this case, well, we don't care too much about it because we don't have an R B here. Now let's go back to this. So now that I know gain is GMRC and I want the gain to be 10 because the question is asking me to have that and I have GM to be one over 50. Therefore that gives me RC to be 500 ohms. Okay. Now, what do I choose for RE? I want RE to be much greater than one over GM, which is 50. Therefore, let's say RE is 500 ohms. I don't want it to be too large because you're going to see in a moment if it's too large then uh well i'm going to have a too large of a voltage across it and then i have to increase vb so you might, i might have biasing problems okay now that i have re i can actually calculate the voltage across re so reie is going to be 500 times the current through the re which is basically the same as IC. I'm going to approximate that it's going to be the same 0.52, right? In reality, if you want to be really, really precise, this would have been 0.52 times 101 over 100, but who cares about that? So this is going to be 500 times 0.52. So it's going to be 260 millivolts. Okay. Now that I know how much voltage I have across RE, then I can calculate my VBE, right? So, or actually I can calculate the voltage I, I need to have at VB, the base voltage. And, and I'm talking, you, you can see that I'm using capital letters here and here and here. So like I'm talking about DC stuff at this point, right? Now, uh, what is VBE? Well, VBE, I can calculate it from the exponential um, relationship that is equal to VT, ln of, um, IC over IS. So it's going to be 26 millivolts ln of, what's IC? 
milliamp over uh, 5 times 10 to the negative 16 amperes. If you do the math, you're going to get 899 millivolts, approximately. Okay, now I know that VP is going to be the REIE plus VPE, right? I'm just writing KVL from ground up. So I'm just saying that this voltage is the voltage across the base emitter terminal plus the voltage across this RE, okay? So it's going to be 899 plus 260, so you're going to get somewhere around 1.16. So I call this 899 as 900 plus 260, you're going to get 1160. 1.16 volts. Okay, so now I know what is the base voltage. I can actually calculate what should be R1 and R2 to have that base voltage. Um, on one hand, I know that R2 over R1 plus R2 times VCC, which is 2.5, should be uh, this 1.16 volts that I found, right? On the other hand, I know that I want the current through this R1 and the current through this R2 to be much smaller than, sorry, much much larger than uh, than the, the, the base current. So since the base current is, um, let me actually write the base current here. So IP is equal to 0.5 to the, uh, so 520 microamp divided by 100, so 5.2 microamperes so i want r1 and r2 to have a current that is in the order of 52 microampere so i'm going to say that vcc divided by r1 plus r2 should be somewhere around 52 microampere so the system of these two equation two unknown is going to give me r1 to be equal to 25.8 kilo and R2 to be equal to 22.3 kilo. Okay, and that's pretty much it. I designed the entire circuit. So we found the value for R1 and R2, for RC and for RE, and well, we met all the requirements. We have the input impedance that is 50 ohms because we set the GM to be that value and we set RE to be um, to be much larger than one over GM, so that like basically the input impedance is one over GM. Therefore, I made sure that my input impedance is 50 ohm, or input resistance is 50 ohm. By knowing that my gain is GMRC and setting GM to be one over 50, now I know that RC should be 500 so that the gain becomes 10. And then from that point forward, it's just about biasing, right? So I, I made sure of my input impedance, I made sure of the gain, I just need to make sure that I bias my transistor so it has the collector current that I think it should have so that I can have the GM that I want to have. So like the GM and the collector current all depends on the biasing, right? How do I make sure of that? First, I calculate what should be the base voltage. Um, and to do that, I calculate, well, what is the voltage across this RE knowing that the resistance should be like basically 500 ohms and the current should be around 0.5 milliamp. Um, I find I find the voltage across the RE, and then I find the voltage across base emitter junction. The addition of the two will give me the voltage across well, the voltage at the base, which is 1.16 volts. Right. Once I have that, now I need to actually find out what is the resistor or resistors R1 and R2 should be to have that voltage. So uh, on one end, uh, one the the resistive divider ratio should give me that voltage. But then that, uh, that, that's a one equation, two unknowns. For the second equation, I know that the current that is flowing through here should be much larger than the base current. We talked about the reason for this last week, uh, or actually two weeks ago. And uh, to, to make sure of that, I made sure that the current VCC divided by R1 and R2 is 10 times bigger than the IP that I found here. And then that gave me R1 and R2. I hope this was clear.